Well, good morning, everybody. It is cold this morning. It was 26 on my truck when I got in it, and I think the official was 28. Doc's on his way out to give the girls their second uh, round of vaccines, and we're gonna microchip them this morning. So I wanted to show you the microchipping process, and Doc should be here in just a few minutes, and we'll explain everything about what the microchip is and how it works. It's been raining out here for the last seven days. Today is the first day that it hadn't rained. This bucket is completely full. And it was completely empty. And that filled up in a day, just a little over a day and a half. And now it is frozen solid. So that's how much rain we've had. I think we probably got about nine inches total in the seven days. So this is the microchip. Comes from uh, Animal ID. It is a syringe and it has the microchip preloaded in it. And it is about the size of a grain of rice and it emits a uh, RFID signal. Once it's injected in the neck and you put a scanner on it, it will emit the RFID signal and tell you what the code is on the microchip. Oh my goodness. Just rubbing a little bit of iodine on the spot. So I wasn't able to uh, record them getting injected with their microchip. Once Doc got close to him, they remembered who he was. They smelled him and they didn't really want to have their second rounds of uh, vaccines or the microchip. So we ended up having to twitch them and it took both of us. So uh, I wasn't able to record it. But where you saw Doc rubbing the iodine at the base of the neck there, he then cleansed it with rubbing alcohol and then just injected it just like you would inject a, um, you know, a regular injection of rabies or tetanus or whatever. They did fine with the twitch. You see they're out here feeding now. None the worse for the wear. But they received a whole second round of vaccines, the exact same thing they received uh, three and a half weeks ago, or however long ago it was, three weeks ago. Got everything except for the rabies. The rabies is good for a year. If you didn't see them getting their first dosage of vaccines, I'll uh, link that video at the end of this. So I'm gonna move them from this pasture over to this pasture out front where it's uh, been greening up for the last couple of weeks. You can see how brown this pasture is where they've been grazing it down, but out front I've got a lot of nice green grass, so they're gonna go over there now. This is the little pamphlet that comes with your uh, pet chip. And I've got to go onto this website right here and register it in my name. So right now that microchip is registered in the vet's name. I'll go on that website and I will register it in my name. And then both of those names will be in the registry. And if for some reason the animal is lost and it is recovered, then when they scan that microchip, it will show me as the owner and all my contact information. It's kind of like a car title. If I don't register that microchip in my name, then it would show up in the vet's name. And if they reached out to the vet, and the vet would say, I have no idea. We microchipped that animal X amount of years ago, and I have no idea what the status of that animal is. We don't take care of it or whatever. You know, Doc says that they get a lot of animals in, cats and dogs that are microchipped, and they have no way to trace the animal back to its owner because the owner never put the chip in their name. So the importance of having this chip is, let's just say there's a natural disaster, a hurricane, a fire, a tornado, and you didn't have time to get your animals taken care of, and so, you know, the storm or the fire came up on you so quickly, which happens all the time. 
you know, a lot of people will just open up their pens and just let their animals out and just hopefully they can fend for themselves and make it through the fire or the storm or the flood or whatever the natural disaster is. They don't ever recover those animals a lot of times. But if they're microchipped, then a vet or a rescue or somebody can, they can scan that chip, get the registration and figure out who the rightful owner is and return that animal to them. If the animal was stolen and you were, you know, found out that your animal was at this location a few months later or a year later or something like that, and you went and confronted the homeowner or the animal owner and they said, oh no, we bought this animal from Mr. So-and-so. And you said, well, I've got a police report right here where the animal was stolen from my farm on such and such date. It then becomes your word against their word and it ends up being a civil matter. If the animal were microchipped, then you could get the police involved. The police could get a veterinarian out there or a rescue out there, somebody with a scanner. They could scan it. They could get the chip ID off the animal and see who the animal was registered to, showing rightful ownership versus just saying, I had a black horse with a white spot on his face. The chip installed on my animal was $34. It's a one-time purchase. There's not a monthly fee. There's not a uh, annual fee. The registration's free. Everything about it, it was just a one-time purchase of $34. I eat $34 worth of McDonald's every week, so I can spend $34 on my horses to hopefully recover them if something were to ever happen. It's no guarantee, but it's more of a guarantee than not having a chip in them at all. So I've got a file on each animal that I started when I picked them up from Jared, the breeder up in South Dakota. Here's their registration paperwork and I put the chip ID sticker at the top of their registration paperwork. And it also comes with a card that has the chip ID on it again. I'll tape that in right here and uh, I'll always have it in their file, and I'll just be able to go to their file if ever I need it. Those microchips can be purchased online from any equine supplier, and if you are a person that administers your own vaccines, then you can probably buy one online, have it shipped to you and administer your, yourself and register it yourself. They're less than 20 bucks if you buy a single dosage and then I've seen them as cheap as $7.99, but you had to buy a quantity of 25. I'm not sure if you have to be a medical professional to get these and you have to get them from your vet or, or what, but for 34 bucks installed by the vet, uh, it's a no brainer. This is the exact same chip that you would put in your cat or your dog. It, like I said, it's about the size of a grain of rice. On a cat or a dog, it's injected between the shoulder blades. On a horse, it's injected in the neck about two inches below the mane. So I hope you learned something and uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.